If you're coming to Barcelona this April 2024 and looking for some of the best things to do around the city, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what Barcelona is like in April, some of the important dates that you need to know, and by far the best celebration that we have regardless of the month, and my favorite day to be in the city throughout the year. But before we get into all of that, remember, as with every month, what I've done is I've created a Barcelona April travel guide that you can take with you from your phone. Being able to access all of this information, including maps and recommendations of things that you will want to eat while you're here, is super easy. Just use the QR code that you'll find right here or the link below to download that guide. April in Barcelona is still technically low season. It's that last month before the high season really kicks in and you start to see people all around the city. Because Easter is in March this year, you're not gonna see that big influx of people on specific days. There is one day of the month that we'll see a little bit later that the city will be absolutely packed. But if you're planning on coming this April, the good news is the weather is going to be great. Average temperatures in April are usually around the upper 60s, lower 70s, and it's a time that you can really take advantage and be outside all the time. Now, my recommendation, as always, is to check the weather closer to the time that you're going to be coming so you can plan a little bit more, but bring those lighter coats, sweaters, sweatshirts, and pants because temperatures always fluctuate here in Barcelona. So you've got those mornings and evenings, which are much cooler. Maybe in the middle of the day, you're taking off those top layers, but realistically, you're going to want to be dressing for multiple days in one. You're not going to have to worry too much about rain. And unfortunately, this year with the drought, we haven't had that many days of rain just in general. But you're going to be able to get outside, take advantage of those terraces, and even get over to the beach. Now, I'm not going to suggest getting into the water. Those temperatures are probably still a little bit too cold but you might see people towards the end of April starting to take that first dip into the Mediterranean. All in all, get ready for that trip because April offers some of the best weather year round and some of the best celebration. Now that first day of note is actually the first of April, which is a lunes de Pascua or Easter Monday. This is not a national holiday all around Spain, but it is in specific regions like Catalonia, Valencia, the Balearic Islands, and Murcia too, I believe. It's a celebration of the end of Semana Santa, with Easter just the day before. That Monday is always a holiday. So what you're gonna find here are probably a lot of people either coming back into the city or leaving with all of that national tourism that happens throughout Spain, you might see a lot of people on the move. You're also going to find that there might be a lot of closures, people taking the day off. Now, if you're going to go shopping, probably not the day to do it, but keep in mind that museums are closed on Mondays anyway, so it's really not going to affect you. Other bigger tourist attractions, if you want to take advantage of them, will be open, so it's not something really to worry about. But the day-to-day -day lives of the locals, it's going to be much more of a family day. People at home celebrating, and one of the big traditions that they have here is eating the mona. What you'll find throughout Easter week are all of these different cakes, a lot of times these chocolate, really decorative cakes all around in the bakeries that people are going to buy. And tradition here is that the godfather buys it for the godchildren, and they go over to each other's houses, and they give them that cake. Now, what's really fun is that this year I'm actually going to be able to buy my first Mona for my godchild, celebrating on Monday, and I'm really looking forward to it. The next big day is at the end of the month, and it's April 23rd. This is the day that I was alluding to a little bit earlier when I was talking about the biggest celebration that you're going to find. The city is going to be hacked with people. While it's not a bank holiday and it's not a day off, you would think that it is. Now, April 23rd is a celebration of the day of St. George or St. Jordi here in Catalan, and it's the celebration of the patron saint of all of Catalonia. I've done a bunch of different videos all about the meaning, and each year I actually do a live stream so that you guys can come, and even if you're not in the city, you can join in, and I hope you can join again this time, because it really is my favorite day of the year. Now, the celebration, very quickly, of St. George is a celebration of St. George killing the dragon, saving the princess from the dragon, taking a rose from that dragon's blood, giving it to the princess, and it's basically celebrated as like a Valentine's Day. Years later, they started adding in the sales of books, and so what you find all around the city are books, roses, and realistically, Catalan flags. It really is a big day, kind of tied into the Catalan tradition. You're going to see all of those books, roses, and flags. Now, a couple years ago, what they started doing is moving all of this to a big super illa, a big super block, 
around the Passage de Gracia, where you'll find all of the books, all of those roses, and it gives us a lot more space. Now, the tradition is that the ladies get the roses, the guys get the books, but now we can do whatever we want. And if you want to take part in this, usually there's a 10% discount on any of the books. A bunch of authors come in to sign all of those books as well. And one thing that you don't want to miss out on are not only San Jordi Day, but the days around it, that Casa Badio gets dressed up for the event, where they decorate the entire facade with those roses, and everybody goes over there to get a picture. It's really something nice to see, apart from the facade that they have every single day, but it's a lot of fun to check out. So my biggest recommendation, if you plan on being in the city or around at that time, is to make sure you're around that Passage de Gracia throughout the day, and it's not just a holiday here in Catalonia. Technically, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Day as World Book Day, and author's rights. Another big day of celebration in April is on the 27th, and it's the day of Montserrat. Apart from San Jordi, Montserrat is also one of the patron saints of Catalonia, and many of you will recognize that name as the famous mountain and day trip that you can take from Barcelona, and rightfully so. It is an awesome day trip that I always recommend getting out to, and April's really a good time to do it. With the weather and everything, you'll have some beautiful views from the mountain. Now, there is a monastery up there, and the story and legend behind how this was all founded was that back in the 9th century, they found the image of the Virgin of Montserrat up at the top of the mountain, and when they decided to move her down, she became too heavy. Now, where she lays today is where they built the basilica, now the monastery, and everything around her, and next year, they'll be celebrating the 1,000th year anniversary. So it always makes for a great day trip. If you're looking for more information all about that, remember I do have a full video all about taking a day trip out to Montserrat, how to get there, what to do, and how to beat the big tourist rush. Now, April 27th, specifically what they do is they have a special mass and celebratory day for the ladies that are around the area that are known as Monse. Montserrat is a very popular name around here with that diminutive of Monse, they have that special day for everybody. I wouldn't maybe recommend going over on April 27th just because it's so busy and it really is a special day for those ladies. But any other day, check out Montserrat. Now, just like any other month in Barcelona, there are a bunch of different activities going on throughout the rest of April that if you're here for it, you might want to check out as well. And that first one is going to be from the 4th to the 6th of April. We've got the Barcelona Eurovision Party. If you've never heard of Eurovision, it's this crazy song competition that takes place between all of the European countries. Israel and Australia are invited for whatever reason. But I remember finding out about this back in 2011 when I watched my first one and actually saw Laureen win with a very, very, what I thought was a good song, Euphoria. Sometimes those countries compete for real. Other times I feel like they just throw in some joke acts, but it becomes a big watch party for all of Europe. Now, this year, what you're going to have are some contestants prior to the Eurovision competition, which will take place in May, coming over to Barcelona and performing in places like the Palau de San Jordi and Popla Español, and right around Plaza España as well. While we're talking about the Palau de San Jordi, throughout the year, there's always some great concerts. And if you hear April 30th, Andrea Bocelli, the famous tenor, will be performing. This year, the Barcelona Sitges Rally is back in the city. And for the first time that I've seen it, it's going to be in April. It's that weekend of the 6th and the 7th. And this one I always find really interesting because a lot of times people don't plan for this event and don't even know that it's going on. But when you get into the Plaza de San Jaume, right at the heart of the Gothic Quarter, you find all of these old time cars. We're talking about all of these jalopies, some over a hundred years old, that are waiting in the plaza and people dressed to that time frame. So you've got all of these people dressed up like they're from the beginning of the 20th century. And it's always cool to get those pictures and see the looks on everybody's faces when they discover it. Now this is going to be the 66th edition. And going back to the beginning, the idea was starting basically a little bit of a rally, more of a competition to get down from Barcelona to Sieges, which is probably about a 40-minute ride in your car, 40 minutes in the train to get over there today. But these cars would go down the main way over to Sieges, stop at the end and Sieges, and then be on display there as well. So what you'll see on the 7th, on that Sunday, usually around noon, all of those cars starting to make their way down to Sieges, where they'll finish up. 
It's also a good idea if you're interested during your time here to make your way down to Sieges. Like I said, just a 40 minute train ride out of the city, beautiful beaches, some really nice quiet lanes and alleys to walk around. And they've actually got some really nice museums for you to check out as well. Tennis fans that are visiting the city will be happy to know that the Barcelona Open is coming back again. This year, it's going to be in town from the 13th to the 21st. Tickets are already on sale, so I would recommend if you want to go getting online and getting those tickets right now. It's going to be held over at the Real Club de Tennis, Barcelona's big tennis club, which is actually this year celebrating its 125th anniversary. Now this year, so far, the big names are going to be Nadal, who's coming back off of that injury and hopefully will still be able to compete, Carlos Alcaraz, who's number two in the world, and Andre Rublev who is number five in the world. So there should be some pretty good action around. It's always a lot of fun. Remember, those tickets on the first couple of days are much cheaper, but if you want to get down to the finals, and hopefully we can have that all-Spanish final between Nadal and Alcaraz, make sure that you're getting those tickets probably right now. Sticking with sports and some football now, I always like to recommend the Barcelona games that you can catch if you're in town. And in April, as of right now, it looks like we've only got one opportunity to catch Barca at home. Remember, this year they're playing at the Olympic Stadium at the top of Montjuic, but they're going to be hosting Valencia on the 28th of April. So if you want to get those tickets, remember the best place to do that is always on the official site for FC Barcelona. But you might also have some more games, depending on how we do in the champion's legs right now in April as well. So stay tuned for that. Even if you're here in Barcelona, know that El Clásico is on April 21st. So the big game, even though we can't see it at home, is going to be on the 21st of April. So make sure that you're at a bar somewhere where you can watch Barca play Madrid. Now, one celebration towards the end of April, and it's usually around 10 days or so that these festivities go on but it's the Feria de Abril de Catalunya. Now, you might have heard of its more famous counterpart down in Seville where everybody goes over and they have these incredible parties. I still want to get down there and try them out myself. But because of all of that immigration, because so many people from Andalusia were moving over to Catalunya for different jobs and things like this in the 50s and 60s, there is a big hub and an association here that sets up their own feria. It's going to be over at the Park of the Forum. And like I said, you've got almost two full weeks with all sorts of different celebrations that you can go check out. Once we get a little bit closer, I'll include it in my April guide so you know where to go. And with all the different celebrations throughout the month, if you haven't caught the Giants yet, your last chance and best chance to do so is on the 28th of April. That Sunday, they're going to be having the big Trubada Nacional de Gigantes, which is not only going to be the big encounter of all the Giants from Barcelona, but Catalonia as a whole. This year, 2024, marks the first ever documented description of those Giants, so it's a big year and a big time to celebrate. There's things throughout the entire year, but the big day is going to be April 28th. Now, I know I've already mentioned April 23rd and St. George, but apart from that celebration, you've got even more going on in the city because it's the Festa Major de la Sagrada Familia. So if you're over or make your way over to the neighborhood where you're going to find, obviously, the Sagrada Familia, you've also got all sorts of different celebrations going on. And these are the days surrounding April 23rd, so it's more than just the one. We don't have that full program out either, but once it becomes known, we'll know a little bit more of which specific activities they have. But you'll see Gigants, those giants from the neighborhood, and they have very specific characters for the neighborhood of the Sagrada Familia. You've also got those fire runs and all sorts of different parades and things going on. But one of the things that I love to see and really got to see a lot last year we're going over and checking out the human towers being made right in front of the nativity facade of the Sagrada Familia to be able to get one of the biggest cultural traditions in the city in front of that Sagrada Familia is really something special. And while you're going over there, you might as well visit the Sagrada Familia yourself. If you've never seen it, it's unlike any other church you'll ever see. But remember, you need to book online. It's just one of the many mistakes that I've seen over and over again that leave people going over to that Sagrada Familia and then later leaving one-star review, when all of that could have been avoided by just doing a little bit of research ahead of time. So able to avoid that and make sure that you don't have a bad experience as well, watch my video next where I talk all about the biggest mistakes not to make when going over to the Sagrada Familia.